Hi, today I'm going to be doing a problem in mechanics materials on columns. Now, as you can see right here, I have four pictures. Now, each one of these consists of a, of a strut, which is an aluminum tube that has a 32 millimeter outer diameter and a 4 millimeter wall thickness. Each one has the same modulus of elasticity of 30 gigapascals, and each one has a safety factor of 2.3. Uh, all of these have the same length and whenever we look at the length of these columns we do not consider how far the column goes into the ground or whatever that's causing the end to be fixed understand that so each one of these has the same length of two meters the only thing that differs between column one column two column three and column four is the way that the ends are secured notice that this one both ends are pinned Therefore, both ends can rotate. Therefore, we say the fixity condition equals 1. On this, one end is fixed, which means one end cannot uh, rotate, it cannot move in the x direction, and it cannot move in the y direction. That means it's fixed. One, is, one end is fixed, and the other end is free. By free, I mean the free end can rotate, it can, um, nothing's causing it to stop rotate on that end. Nothing stopping it from moving in the x direction, nothing stopping it moving in the y direction. Okay, and the fixity condition for this type of scenario is 2. If you have both ends are fixed, the fixity condition for that scenario is 0 0.5. If you have one end fixed right here and one end pinned, the fixity condition is 0 0.7. Okay, so we know what the K is in our formula. We also know what the L is. We know what our E is. Well, what is our I? Well, you can see in one of my other lessons on how to find that, and it involves having to look at this hollow tube, having to look at the outer radius and the inner radius. Okay? Whenever you do the math on that, you will get the area moment of inertia to be 3.51858 times 10 to the power of negative 8 meters to the fourth. So that will plug in for our I. Now, if we were to solve this formula as is, we would indeed find the critical force, centric force applied to this column that would cause it to buckle. However, that's not what the question is asking. It's asking the determinable, determine the allowable load for each of the call uh, for each of the support conditions shown so what we're going to do is we're going to take this formula right here and by the way the factor of safety the higher your factor of safety the more safe something is if you say the factor of safety the critical for this to, this to fail was 2,000 newtons and we were to apply a thousand newtons to that for the allowable you would get a factor of safety of two. However, if the allowable that we were to apply right here was only a hundred, you would get a factor of safety of twenty. Because you know, we're only applying a hundred when the thing would, would, would buckle at two thousand. So you have a much higher factor of safety. So all that aside, whenever we say we can say we take this formula and we can do some algebra some algebra on it, excuse me, and we would say that the P critical equals the factor of safety times the P allowable. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug this P critical into this side of the P critical of this formula right here. So we're going to say the factor of safety whoops, factor of safety times the P allowable equals pi squared times the modulus of elasticity times the area of moment of inertia divided by the fixity condition squared divided by the length squared. And then we're going to divide both sides by the factor of safety. We divide by this side by the factor of safety, they'll cancel out. We divide this side by the factor of safety, it'll go right here in the denominator. So our factor of safety was 2.3, our length was 2 meters, our K is 1, our E is 30 times 10 to the 9th Pascals and our I is 3.51 times 10 to the negative 8 meters to the 4th. 
And this will give us our allowable uh, force, our centric force, for this first column. And that turns out to be 2,642 newtons for condition one. Now remember earlier I said that the only thing that were that, the dip, that differed between these four columns was the fixity condition. So you can take this formula right here and just the only thing that you have to change is the fixity condition and you'll get a different number. So for our second condition you'll get an allowable uh, centric force of 660 newtons. For our third condition we get 10,569 newtons and for our fourth condition we get 5,392 newtons. Notice the highest one is the one with the two fixed ends. I mean that just makes common sense probably to most people. If you have if you it's just more secure it's 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 caused more strength it causes the column less likely to buckle and if it were to buckle it would buckle you know like it would want to go like that if you if you don't understand what buckling means that means it would anytime something buckles if you have a column like that if it buckled it would go like this you can take a ruler and push on both ends and you will see that it does in fact buckle. Okay, um, notice the one with the free end. That was the one that for, for it to be in safe conditions you could only allow, you can only put 660 newtons on that thing for a safety factor of 2.3. Pretty pretty small, not, not very uh, resistant to buckling at all when you have a free end. But whenever you have the two fixed ends, very resistant to buckling. And that concludes this um, tutorial on uh, columns and buckling.